You know, the last time I played golf when I was about 23 years old, and I just got back into it this summer. Um, so I've been paying a little bit of attention to this stuff. And it, I don't, I find this interesting and I don't at the same time. It's a, uh, I caught a, I don't know, YouTube algorithm feeding you crap on uh, like the shorts or whatever. And they showed an interview with somebody complaining about um, John Daly getting a cart recently. And then they flipped over to Tiger Woods a couple of years ago saying that he's kind of bagging on Daly for the cart saying, you know, that Tiger walked on a fractured leg and torn something. You know, they, I think they've always had their beef. I don't know the backstory on that. And I, I, I look back and I go, well, you know, does Tiger regret that? Because now that he's all banged up, you know, would he like to use a cart, but he, but he couldn't because he ran his mouth so much in the past. And as I think about that, and you read this, it's like, I just think this guy is down for what golf was, is, and what he thinks it should be. You know, it seems like he's pretty rooted in principles and there's part of this old world of golf that he respects. There's a tradition, right? And I think he's just going to run with that tradition. It's, I don't, as of right now, it seems like he wouldn't jump ship. I mean, if you don't want to jump ship for seven, eight hundred million, you, you're deeply rooted in your principles and traditions. So from him wanting to walk and not use a cart, even when he's all banged up, which means him playing less golf. That's how much like this, respecting this tradition means to him i'm guessing i'm like i'm just reading into this that it means him playing less tournaments and less golf the thing he loves the most because he respects his game for what it was that much he's probably not going to leave for any amount of money subject to change i'm sure we'll see but when I, when I saw this i'm not surprised you know unfortunately right now this is turning into I don't know. I always use the analogy of uh, there was an article a while, long time ago, about these motorcycle gangs in uh, California beating up each other with like ball peeing hammers at a Starbucks parking lot, in a Starbucks parking lot over like territory. That's what it seems it's going to come down to. You know, it's going to be it's going to be live versus you know tradition at the end of the day. And uh, I was talking to Kane about this, and you know he's been thinking about it. You know, if it opens up, you know more room for more players to get in the game and make more money does, does everyone not win and that's how i kind of look at it i also think that this is i don't even know what is, is it the, the pgas or some other organization i don't i'm not that deep in this stuff here uh, i'll say pga for now there's they don't i think they don't change that this is eventually going to come back and kind of bite them and i under i appreciate the you know, you know, steeped in tradition type of stuff, but it so it doesn't mean you got to lose who you are, but I think you do have to modernize a little bit. I, I started rec recently looking at country clubs and, you know, I'm telling, I'm, you know, I'm talking to people, my circle of friends is, you know, business executives, investors, and, you know, doctors, lawyers, these people all belong to their country clubs and they all belong to different country clubs for different reasons. And I, you know, I'm trying to figure out, you know, where do you go where you want to be a part of a good community with good golf, but, you know, I don't want to walk into a place that if I don't remember, you know, every PGA champion by year and every golf course designer, and if I haven't, you know, I don't, I don't want to walk into that environment or, you know, God forbid that you forget one of the little golf rules and that the whole place jumps down your throat. Like, I don't, I think part of that of, of golf is going to eventually fade away. Even on the tour, you seem, you know, some of the players dressing a little different. I think one time someone had a, like a hoodie kind of rugby thing on and things are going to change a little bit, but there's still this very old school golf mentality out there. But I do appreciate, I do appreciate that you need to look nice you got to carry yourself a certain way, and you just can't show up to the country club or the golf course looking like slobs. Um, I still appreciate that in a time when the world seems to be going backwards, right? It's You see kids walking into high school dressed in, like, you know, sweatpants and still in their, uh, you know, flannel pajamas, and there's nothing wrong with taking a little pride in your appearance and yourself and, 
the world seems to be going backwards in some sense. So I do appreciate the the golf mentality of hey, you know, that we we have a, a level here that we want to hold ourselves to. But then there's a lot of just snobbery and there's a lot of stuff to that game that if, if you look at the new world and how people are coming up, they're not about that. They're they're kind of about tearing down old traditions. And I'm not saying tear down old traditions, but maybe modernize a little bit. And I, I feel it's kind of what Liv's doing. Now, if they can get through the initial year or two, which it sounds like they got the money to do whatever they want, this could be something really interesting. Or maybe it's not. But again, I look at it from that point of view of more people getting to make more money, more golf on TV. You know, it's, it's a lot of golf. We have a lot of golf courses in Michigan, but a lot of them you know, are struggling. And um, I play, I like racket sports, I like racquetball and I like tennis. And at, you talk to people in those communities as, as well, like golf, tennis, racquetball, they're all struggling a little bit. It's, you know, people are, are taking their time and their money and they're doing different things now. And I think if we can get more golf on TV, then why not? If we can get more tennis on TV, why not? If we can get more people inspired to play the game, then why not? You know, I think a lot of people now don't want to get in the golf because there's a certain thing associated with it. I mean, I ran into my fair amount of assholes on the golf course when I was like, you know, 22, 23 years old. And it makes you not want to play. It's usually some grumpy old 50, 60 year old guy that, you know, that's all he does is like live for, you know, golf and then just ruin the crap for everybody else. Unfortunately, those people drag the sport down. And that if we don't change some of that, then you're going to see that continue to shrink, I think. So, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Um, I keep looking back. It's like, man, you know, does Tiger regret saying that about the carts? You know, because that was, I think that was, he said that before he got smashed up his car. You know, or is it, you know, would it matter? if Even if he didn't say that stuff towards John, does he got so many principles and does he worry about the tradition so much and what he's a part of? what he's helped build in a sense that, you know, he would walk anyways, even if it means less golf and he would never go to live. I mean, we'll see. It's not exactly surprising. Like nothing stays the same forever. Like, you know, we'll see, but more golf on TV, more money. You know, how, how does the PGA handle it? You know, we'll, we'll see. There, maybe there's a way for both of these things to survive at the same time. Uh, maybe the PGA sort of changed things in the past. If, if anything, the live might force, you know, I, I mean, you go do a quick Google search again. I don't know much about this. There's a lot of complaints about the, the PGA. And maybe this will force them to change some things about what they've done. And maybe live doesn't make it, but it will force the old school way of things changing. Maybe they'll get more money into the players. hands. I want to say I already read the PGA is giving out more money now to try to compete. It's just, uh, you know, it's for all these years, it was kind of this good old boys club and now things change. And it's really, how do you, do you, do you try to mitigate the change? How do you man, manage a change? Do you change yourself? Do you just try to fight back? Do you attack? Do you get defensive? Do you get offensive? Like, what are you going to do? Or is it possible that both of these things can live, maybe not in perfect harmony, but can they run side by side and everyone just makes more money and we get more people into golf? But uh, are your principles worth seven or $800 million? <laughs> like, um, do you think Tiger should have took the deal? I don't know. Drop a comment below.